Welcome, everyone. On behalf of the National Transit Institute, I thank you for participating in today's webinar, the National Transit Data Database, NTD, reporting for reduced reporters, report year 2018. The National Transit Institute develops, promotes, and delivers training and education programs for the public transit industry in the United States. <clears throat> we are pleased to have today Melissa Conti and Dan Barnes as our presenters. Melissa Conti joined the NTD team in 2015. She is a graduate of James Madison University and currently works as a validation analyst for urban and rural reporting modules of the National Transit Database. Dan Barnes, <coughs> sorry, my voice. Dan Barnes joined the NTD team in 2012. He is a graduate of Clarkson University and currently works as a validation analyst for the urban reporting module of the National Transit Database. For today's webinar, Melissa and Dan will alternate present, presenting their material, uh, and if they are able, they will answer questions in the chat box. Um, if you've been with us before, you know we usually wait and uh, do Q&A at the end. This presentation uh, is a longer one, I think, so we might have time for that, but you also feel free to type, and if we can get to you to answer your question as we go, we'll do that. But if not, we'll try to get to you at the end. So uh, use the chat box in the bottom left for that. If you haven't already printed out a copy of the presentation that was emailed to you, you can click on the handouts in the upper left hand corner where it says handouts entity reduced reporter. Um, and that should download. Or in the notes section there are two links. One is a Google Drive, which I know is blocked in some offices, and the other one is Rutgers Post-it. Um, those are not clickable links. You have to copy and paste into a browser. So uh, if you have any other issues, you can reach out to Andrea Lambert. Um, you can email her. She's at A-N-D-R-E-L-A-M at nti.rutgers.edu. And she'll be able <coughs> so sorry, she'll be able to assist you. I'll now turn the presentation over to Melissa. Thank you, Lori. Um, so like Lori said, we are going to take questions at the end um, if there is time. Just as a reminder, um, if you do have any agency-specific questions, uh, we may just ask you to contact your analyst if it is something that is specific or unique to your agency. Um, but please feel free to pop some questions into the chat pod as we go. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. So good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the National Transit Database webinar for reduced reporters. Thank you very much for joining us today. All right, here is the contact information for the National Transit Database. If at any point you require technical assistance while completing your report or accessing our published data products, please feel free to call or email our help desk between 8 a.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Time. My name, as Lori said, is Melissa Conti, and I'm joined here today by Dan Barnes, who will also be presenting today. Our contact information is listed here if you have any questions about this presentation, or you can also contact your assigned NTD analyst. Here is the agenda for this afternoon. We will review the basic policies of NTD reporting, including a reporting overview, as well as touching on some policy, policy clarifications and new requirements for this year. We will then discuss how to get started in the NTD 2.0 reporting system, how to kick off and complete the annual report, how to submit through the report, the report through the system, and then lastly, we will briefly review the validation and revision process. All right, so first we're going to begin with an overview of the NTD. So who reports to the NTD? Agencies that are recipients or beneficiaries of FTA 5307 Urbanized Area Formula Program Funds or FTA 5311 Rural Area Formula Program Funds are required to report to the NTD. Beginning with this report year, now any recipients or beneficiaries of FTA Chapter 53 funds are required to report to the NTD if they operate public, tra public transit. These agencies are public transportation providers that may include direct transit providers, state departments of transportation and their subrecipients, as well as metropolitan planning organizations or MPOs. Transit agencies are welcome to report their public transit data to the NTD on a voluntary basis, even if they do not currently receive these funds. 
The data from these reports contributes to apportionments for the urbanized areas or UZAs. Within the urban module of the NTD, reduced reporters are transit agencies who operate fewer than 30 vehicles in their peak maximum service. They also do not operate on any fixed guideway such as rail or fixed catenary system. For those who report as a reduced reporter, these agencies do not report data related to passenger miles in their service. They also do not report monthly service statistics or monthly safety data. Agencies have four months after their fiscal year ends to complete their NTD report. For example, if your fiscal year ends on June 30th, the deadline for submission is October 31st, and the report must be closed out or finalized by April 1st of the following year. We have three primary groups of fiscal year reporting deadlines listed here in the table. Next, we'll cover what to report. Agencies must report all public transportation services, whether they are operated by your agency directly or contracted out as purchased transportation. Public transit must be regular, continuing, shared ride, and open to the public or a segment of the public, such as seniors or persons with disabilities. Report all asset, expenditures, and service data associated with these services. In your financial data, you should report the total annual cost of your service, regardless of whether it was federally or locally funded. And you should also report services for which your agency is responsible for covering the full cost. You must report data that is specific to each mode and type of service you operate, such as bus, demand response, van pool, and so on. Be sure to collect and report service and financial data by each separate mode. Additionally, ensure you report actual data rather than data that is based on calculations or estimates. Report all direct as well as indirect expenses related to the service, also regardless of the funding source. Here is the general flow of the NTD reporting process. All agencies begin with report training and familiarizing themselves with the NTD policy manual. They then compile and collect their data once their fiscal year ends. They enter it into the NTD system and submit their first report, and their assigned analyst will review the data and send it back with revisions or requested clarifications. Once the report is finalized, it is sent to FTA for approval. The data is used in the apportionment formula funding the following year, and the data is eventually published on the NTD website for the general public to use. Next, we will discuss the changes coming for this report year, report year 2018. Updates to the NTD's Uniform System of Accounts, or USOA, were first announced in October 2016, and those NTD requirements are now being implemented. These changes are intended to clarify reporting concepts and increase the quality of data reported. Please refer to the USOA document on our website for clarifications on reporting. Also note that reduced reporters will report their financial information on the RR20 or reduced reporting form instead of the full reporter financial form such as the F10. There are a couple of changes to the RR20 or reduced reporting form for this report year and they are as follows. Number one, you will report on fare revenues by the specific type, passenger paid fares or organization paid fares but will still report a total amount of fair revenues expended. Number two, the donation line item has been removed from the RR20. And lastly, number three, the contract revenues line item has also been removed from the form. As mentioned, the fares will be split into two classes. The passenger paid fares are the fares paid by the riders that come aboard the transit vehicle. Some examples are full adult fares or senior citizen fares. Organization paid fares will now capture fares earned from organizations for providing transit service. This example includes any sort of university paying an amount for their students to ride for free. Another change, as previously mentioned, is, mo is the moving of donations field on the R20. Donations will now be reported to other directly generated funds. You will no longer report this directly. The other directly generated funds field will include insurance recovery, 
instead of being netted out, which include payouts, rebates, or any funds that may be netted out towards future bills. Please note that donations made on the transit vehicle are still considered fair revenue. Lastly, this year, there will be no contract revenues field on the R20 form. Funds that you previously reported to this field will now either be reported to revenues accrued through a PT agreement or they will be reported by the original source. If the contract is a full cost contract, you will report the funds to the revenues accrued through a PT agreement field. If it is a partial cost contract, you will report it based on the original source of funds. The next change we'll discuss is discussed is the Independent Auditor Statement for Financial Data, also known as the IASFD. This audit is a review of the agency's accounting system to determine whether or not the agency can meet NTD financial reporting requirements. The auditor should determine whether the agency's chart of accounts mirrors or is directly translatable to the USOA. This is now required for reduced reporters. In pr prior years, this audit was only applicable to full reporters and separate service reporters. Going forward, this audit requirement is also applicable to reduced reporters or small systems reporters. Additionally, this audit was previously only required once for your first year reporting to the NTD unless the agency significantly changed their accounting system. However, now the requirement is that agencies should have the audit performed once every 10 years. This means that if your agency has never had an IASFD audit completed or has not completed one in the past 10 years, you should be submitting one with your 2018 report. In terms of resources, the policy manual appendix contains a template for the auditor statement. However, auditors do not have to use this template, it is just a helpful tool. FTA will accept formats other than the template as long as the intent meets the policy. Additionally, FTA has published an IASFD help sheet to clarify the intent of the IASFD audit and suggestions for what the auditor should be reviewing. This help sheet can be found on the NTD webpage under the manual section of, the re of reference materials. If your agency's IASFD audit is not completed by the original submission due date for your report, you can still submit the report. You will indicate the anticipated completion date of the audit on your D10 form. We will cover this form a little bit later in the presentation. Although you can submit without the completed audit, the audit must be completed as soon as possible to ensure that your report is closed out on time. Another change is that this year, report year 2018, the asset inventory reporting is required rather than optional. You will now be required to complete the new asset form and data fields that were optional in report year 2017. We will cover these forms in more detail later on in the presentation. Please note that assets are now reported when they enter revenue service and not when they arrive on transit property. Next, we will take a look at the Transit Asset Management Phase-In Schedule. For report year 2018, you can see here that you are required to report your FY 2019 targets, report condition data on vehicles, including revenue and service vehicles, and lastly, you are required to report condition assessments for 25% of your facilities for which you have capital responsibility. Please note that if you have three or fewer facilities, you must report the condition of one facility. The narrative report is not required until report year 2019. Now we will review some key points to remember. 
NTD follows a cruel accounting principle. What that means is that the revenues are recorded when earned, regardless of whether or not the receipt of revenue takes place in the same reporting period. Expenses are recorded when the liability occurs, regardless of when the payment is made. For example, if a passenger purchases $10 worth of fares, but only uses $5 of the fares in that moment during the fiscal year, the agency would recognize and report $5 of passenger fares as that is the portion earned at the fiscal year end. Following the accrual accounting path, total expenses will be broken down between two types, operating and capital. Operating expenses are day-to-day -day expenses related to operating and maintaining vehicles, equipment, and buildings along with any other general administration costs. Some examples of these operating costs are fuels for the vehicles, salaries, wages, and benefits for transit-related employees, along with the rest of the examples listed here on the slide. For agencies with multiple modes, some, agent, some expenses are hard to trace back to a specific mode. If an agency operates more than one mode, the total amount of operating expenses must re be reported as indirect and direct by mode. Direct expenses need to be reported to a particular mode of transportation. These can include things such as bus passes, labor, or fuel costs. For indirect expenses like maintenance costs that are shared between uh, vehicles or building maintenance costs that are shared between modes, these expenses need to be determined aside from direct expenses. Once indirect expenses have been identified, they can be allocated between the modes involved based on a reliable service data point such as vehicle revenue miles. Capital expenses are related to the purchase of transit equipment like vehicles or maintenance facilities. This means non-expendable personal property that has a useful life of over one year or an acquisition cost of over $500,000 or the capitalization level established by your organization. If you have a capital expense where both modes utilize that asset, Please report the capital expense to the mode that the asset supports the majority of the time. With the updated USOA or Uniform System of Account changes, the B30 contractual relationship form also received some updates. There is a new field in the contract summary section labeled fares retained by. This field should identify whether the seller keeps the fares or the seller returns the fares collected to the buyer of service. There is also a new functionality. Instead of entering values directly into the grid at the bottom of the form, there is an edit button at the far right of each mode and type of service on that particular contract. Upon clicking that edit button, the form will bring you to a page that looks like this, where agencies can enter the contract-related details. The logic of this form has been modified. Previously, agencies were to subtract the fares and capital leasing from the total payment to the contractor and type in a net figure. Going forward, agencies still report the fares and capital leasing amounts as they used to, but instead of netting them, they now type in the total payment to the contractor in the direct payment line, and the form will calculate the rest of the necessary data. With these updates, the B30 forms for van pool modes will also look a little different than years past. There are two new fields. The new first new field is passenger out-of-pocket pocket expenses which will capture all costs paid for by the passengers directly, such as fuel, tolls, and maintenance. The second new field is agency subsidy, 
which will be the amount paid by the transit agency to the van pool contractor. This often takes the form of a per, man, per van per month subsidy. Here are some key NTD reference documents, including our glossary, user guide for the reporting system, and the updated Uniform System of Accounts, or USOA. You can find these on our website or linked directly here in the presentation. We also have some new reference materials, including a reduced reporting policy manual, which is specific for reduced reporters. You can also find the Asset Inventory Reporting Guide under the Manual section of our website as well. This will include information specific to the Asset Module. Lastly, FDA published guidebooks for facility condition assessments that you can access on our website and the TAM website for reference. Now we will cover the NTD 2.0 reporting system. This is the NTD homepage for those of you who are not familiar with it. It is transit.dot.gov slash NTD as a National Transit Database. There are two links on this page that will allow you to access the reporting system. One is on the left and one is on the middle right of the page. Once you log in, you will land on the news feed. You will see updates and notifications from the NTD team here. While the system does include a means to enter comments or provide kudos to your analyst, please do not use this platform as a means to contact your analyst with reporting questions. Please always email them or give them a call directly. You can access your annual report, agency profile, and your system users through the record tab at the top of the page. You can access the profile by hitting the records tab at the top of the page and then My NTD Reporter Profile. Next, you will select your agency's profile link. You will then land on the Profile Summary page. This page contains your analyst name, phone number, and email address, as well as your agency's basic information. At the top of the Profile section, the e-file library contains historical requests like the extension request or agency fiscal year updates. The form library contains your agency's reports from previous years. If you need to access the 2017 report for your agency while completing the 2018 report, you can do this through the form library. Related Actions allows you to edit your agency's profile informa information, such as your basic information, modes, and users. To edit your modes, Select Related Actions, and then select the View and Manage Reporter Modes link on the P20 form. If you'd like to add a new mode to your agency's profile, select Add Mode at the bottom of this screen. You will not need to add the same mode year over year, as this data will be retained by the reporting system. Select the mode from a drop-down menu, such as Bus, Demand Response, etc. Select whether the service is directly operated by your agency or contracted out as purchase transportation. Enter the commitment date, which is when your agency first committed capital funds towards the mode, and enter a start date, which is the first day of revenue service. Do not enter an end date if the service is still in operation. Only enter an end date if the service has been terminated.
Please note that agencies cannot delete modes from the profile once they have been added. You may edit modes directly in this form by selecting the field you wish to update. You may add an end date if the service has ceased operation or update the commitment or start dates if needed. Lastly, we will review the user roles for agency users in the NTD system. User roles are as follows, the CEO, the NTD contact, editors, or viewers, and the CEO delega delegate if applicable. The CEO delegate role is optional for all agencies and requires FTA approval. CEOs and CEO delegates have the highest level of access and permissions in the system, including the ability to create reporter requests like waivers or extension requests. CEOs have the ability to submit the report as well as view and edit report forms and issues. NTD contacts have the same permissions as CEOs aside from creating reporter requests and submitting the original submission or first draft of the report. Editors may only revise and save forms, while viewers may only view the form. You may disregard the safety roles such as safety contact or safety editor, as urban reduced reporters do not report safety data through the monthly safety module. Next, we will jump into starting the report year. The first step in completing the annual report is completing the report year kickoff. This process officially launches the current report year. After your fiscal year ends, your agency's CEO and NTD contact will receive a task in the system to complete the kickoff. This process will generate the report package for the year after you confirm your agency's information. First, the CEO or NTD contact will select the task tab at the top of the page. You will complete the 2019 report year kickoff in order to generate the 2018 report package forms. You'll need to accept the task and then click proceed. The first step in this process is confirming and editing your agency's users for the year. You can add users or edit existing contact information as needed. The next step is confirming or editing your agency's modes for the year. You can add new modes if you started a new service, or you can end modes if a service has ceased operations in the past year. The next step is managing your 2018 Transit Asset Management Group Plan Sponsor. If you are participating in a Group Transit Asset Management Plan or TAM plan, select your sponsor during this section of the kickoff. If you are completing your own Transit Asset Management Plan or TAM plan, you can simply click Continue. Next, you'll confirm your reporter type for 2018. If you are a small systems reporter last year, ensure that no is selected under change type as your reporter type will not be changing. Select the same answer for your 2019 reporter type and then select submit to complete the report year kickoff. This will generate your 2018 report package forms. The system typically takes a couple minutes to complete this function, so be sure to check for your forms after al allowing a little bit of time to pass. Next, we will review annual form navigation in the reporting system. To access your 2018 report package, first select the Records tab at the top of the page and then click on NTD Report Packages. You will then select your agency's 2018 report package link. Once the report package summary page opens, select Annual Forms at the top right-hand corner of your screen. 
This will open the list of report package forms. <coughs> you can select any form link to open up the form. This is the list of forms you will see in your report package, which we will review one by one. Please note that the Transit Asset Management Facilities Inventory A15 and Service Vehicle Inventory A35 form are required this year. Your agency may have the Transit Asset Management Performance Measure Target or A90 form if you are completing your own TAM plan. We'll talk a little bit more about these forms later on in the presentation. The first form in each report package is the B10 identification form. The first step on this form is to select your agency's organization type from the drop-down menu. Examples of available organization types include city, county, or local government, or independent public agency or authority of transit service. Once you have selected your agency's organization type, you will then report your demographic information. This includes service area square miles and service area population. These data points for the service area should represent your agency's true service area for transit and not the data for your particular urbanized area. To complete your demographic information, you will report data related to your urbanized areas or UZAs. Your primary UZA will be pre-populated in the form and then you will select any secondary urbanized areas as applicable by selecting them from your available secondary UZA drop-down menu. Then you will click the Add UZAs button. Lastly, if your agency has any modes that will be captured in another NTD report, you will report them here. If this does not apply to your agency, please leave this section blank. Please consult your analyst before adding any new modes filing separately on this form. Next, we will cover the B30 contractual relationship form. This form captures information about contractual relationships. These are relationships where transit service is provided to an agency or a governmental unit from a public or private transportation provider based on a written contract. The buyer of service will be the transit agency that pays another entity to perform service. Please note, if the buyer of service only pays a portion of the cost to operate service, it should not be reported as a contract. The seller will be the entity that provides service on behalf of the agency. The seller may be a public or private entity. The NTD has specific criteria for service that may be reported as a contract. The criteria are as follows. A written agreement exists that, number one, obligates the seller to provide the operations for a specific monetary consideration, number two, specifies a contractual relationship for a certain time period and service. Number three, obligates the seller to provide the buyer with operating statistics required by the annual NTD report. And lastly, the authorized representatives of both the buyer and the seller sign the written agreement. Buyers must pay the full cost of service in order to report the service as a contract to the NTD. Also, the service must be branded under the transit agency purchasing the service. In order to add a B30 form to your report package, you will click on the Add Contractual Relationship button at the top of your report package summary dashboard. All B30s from previous report years will generate during your report year kickoff as part of your report package. For report year 2018, there will be two types of B30 forms one for vanpool modes, and then one for all non-vanpool modes. Once you have added the B30 form to your report package, the first step is to select whether the contractual relationship is with another agency who reports to the NTD or is a private company. Once you have done so, you will then click Continue. If your B30 is with another NTD reporter, you must select the contracted agency from a list generated by the NTD database. You can also search for the provider in the search bar. 
Next, you will select your contractual position. This will be whether your agency is the buyer of service or the seller of service. Once you have indicated your position, you will then report whether the contract was negotiated or competitively bid. This should refer to when the contract was awarded, even if the option years have been exercised. Now you will select the primary feature of the contract. How does the buyer compensate the seller? There are two options. The buyer pays the seller a negotiated fixed rate per unit of service, or the buyer reimburses the seller's net operating expenses based on an approved budget. You will select either one of these options from the drop-down menu. Then you will indicate whether the service will be reported in your entity report or in another NTD report. If you are reporting the service in your own NTD report, then select the option of in this report. If another NTD reporting agency will be capturing the service provided in the contract, then select in another report. Next, you will indicate whether the seller keeps the fares or if the seller returns the fares collected to the buyer. The last aspect of the summary is to select the public assets provided to the seller by the buyer, if applicable. This may be vehicles, maintenance facilities, or other public assets. If you select other, you will be required to provide a description of the public assets provided. The next section of the B30 form is where you will add each mode provided as part of the contract. You may only add active modes from your P20 form or modes listed as filing separately on your B10 form. You will click the Add New Mode and Type of Service button at the bottom left of the form to add modes. Select the appropriate mode type of service and then click Edit on the right to open up the rest of the Key Financial and Operating Statistics section. There are several parts of the Key Financial and Operating Statistics section. First, you will report the number of vehicles operated in the maximum service, or VOMS. This should represent the highest number of vehicles operating at any given point during the year, excluding special events or atypical service days. Then, indicate how many months the seller provided service during the report year. Next, you will report the amount of fair revenues generated by the service. You will report this amount regardless of whether the buyer or seller retains the fares. Then, agencies still report the fares and capital leasing amounts as they used to, but instead of netting them, they now type in the total payment to the contractor in the direct payment line, and the form will calculate the rest of the necessary data. Next, you will indicate the amount of capital leasing expenses for the contract. Capital leasing costs are expenses that the seller charges the buyer for use of its capital assets, such as vehicles or maintenance facilities. If the, provide, if the buyer provides all of the assets, this does not apply. If you are the buyer of service, you will record any costs your agency incurs for overseeing the contract under the Other Operating Expenses Incurred by the Buyer field. This should include general admin costs to oversee the contract and any other applicable expenses. Lastly, you will report any leases and rentals to the other reconciling items incurred by the buyer field. This will be for expenses such as vehicle rentals. The next form we will review is the A10 Stations and Maintenance Facilities form. On this form, you will begin by reporting data on your agency's passenger stations. 
you will report the number of ADA accessible and non-accessible stations as well as the number of elevators and escalators. Passenger stations must be significant structures in separate right-of-ways in order to be reportable. Please note, bus stops or bus, bus shelters do not count as passenger stations. With the introduction of the expanded asset inventory module back in report year 2017, the number of multimodal stations is no longer captured on the A10 form. Next, you will report a count of your agency's maintenance facilities used to support revenue service. This will include any owned or leased maintenance facilities. You will report the facilities by the facility ownership type, facility type, and capacity. If your agency uses one maintenance facility for multiple modes, you will need to prorate the facility based on the amount of vehicles it services. For example, if an agency operates a demand response mode and a bus mode that use the same facility, this facility would need to be prorated between each A10 form for each mode. If the agency owns 20 vehicles total, 15 of which are used for demand response and the other five are used for bus, the demand response A10 would reflect 0.75 of the facility and the bus A10 form would reflect 0.25 of the facility. This is determined by taking the number of vehicles for each mode and dividing by the number of total vehicles for all modes. Now we will talk about the A15 form. In the Transit Asset Management Facilities Inventory, or A15 form, you will report all administrative and maintenance facilities for which you have capital replacement responsibility, as well as all passenger facilities that your agency uses in revenue service, regardless of capital replacement responsibility. A few common examples of facility types are administration buildings, which are the offices that house executive management and supporting activities for transit operations, not including vehicle maintenance. Combined administrative and maintenance facility, which is a facility that combines functions of both an admin and maintenance facility. And finally, a maintenance facility. These are facilities where routine and heavy maintenance on vehicles are performed. When filling out the form, you will need to complete all required fields, which we will review. There are three sections for each facility, facility information, condition assessment, and address. Now we will go through an overview of the form and how to fill it out. To get started, click Add New. This will bring you to the Update Facility Information section where you will click on Add Facility. Next, you will fill out the name of the facility. You can name this whatever you'd like that makes it easily identifiable. Then, you will fill out the primary mode for which this facility serves. This is similar to the concept of predominant use for reporting capital expenditures. If this facility serves more than one mode, you should choose a primary mode. And then in the next field, you can identify any other mode served as a secondary mode. The secondary mode should be selected for another mode that the facility serves, or it can be left blank if it does not serve any other mode. The secondary mode field is not a drop-down menu, so you will need to start typing before options appear. Next, you can identify any private modes that share use of the facility. The options for these non-public transit modes are airport, private bus, private water taxi, and private rail. Examples of a private bus would be Greyhound, and private rail would be Amtrak. Here, you will choose the facility type from the drop-down menu. You should select the facility type that fits your facility best. If you have any questions about which facility you should select, please contact your analyst with details about that facility. 
You will then report the year that, faci that fa the facility was built or reconstructed, the square footage, the number of parking spaces, percentage of your capital responsibility, and any notes you deem necessary. Next, you will click Continue to go to the Condition Assessment section of the form. Here, you will report the condition assessment for the facility on a scale of 1 to 5, 5 being excellent and 1 being poor. If you would like guidance on how to complete a condition assessment, please refer to the TAM Facility Performance Measure Reporting Guidebook, which can be found on NTD's website. Once the condition assessment has been selected, you should select the estimated date in which you conducted this assessment. Lastly, you should click on the Update Address tab or click Continue to fill out the facility's address information. You may report either the address of the facility or the latitude and longitude. Once all the information has been added, you can review or edit any of the facility information by clicking on the facility name from the main A15 landing summary page. Now we will review the A30 Revenue Vehicle Inventory form. Each year, you should review the A30 form and update with any new vehicles or retire any vehicles that are no longer in service. The A30 form will pre-populate all vehicle fleets from the previous report year. If you need to add a new fleet, you will select the Add New Fleet button. First, you will report the basic information about the fleet. If there are multiple vehicles in a fleet, these vehicles should be identical across all specifications. You will select a vehicle type from a drop-down menu of options. Then, you will report the number of total vehicles and active vehicles in that fleet. Active vehicles should include all vehicles that are available to provide revenue service, including your spares. Next, you will select the ownership type. This will include options such as owned or leased, and whether it is owned or leased by a public agency or private entity. Then, you will select the funding type. This should represent the largest funding source for the vehicle fleet. If there are several options for funding type, including FTA grant programs, other federal funds, and non-federal funds. Once you have entered the basic information, you will now report the vehicle information. This includes the, vehicle, the fleet's model, length, seating and standing capacities, fuel type, manufacturer, and year of manufacture. Some vehicles may have multiple manufacturers. Agencies must report the final manufacturer and model. For example, for a cutaway vehicle, you should report the cutaway body manufacturer and model since that is the final manufacturer of the vehicle. You should not report the manufacturer and model of the vehicle's chassis. If you have questions about how to report these data points for your fleets, please contact your analyst for guidance. As a note, beginning in report year 2018, if your agency reports a year of rebuild for a vehicle fleet, you will, now, you will also now be required to indicate the type of rebuild that was performed. In each vehicle fleet, you will see useful life benchmark, as well as useful life remaining in the vehicle information section. Useful life benchmark is the expected life cycle or the acceptable period of use in service for an asset, as determined by your agency or the default benchmark provided by FTA. Please note that this measure takes into account your unique operating environment, including your geographic location, the frequency of your service, and your climate. Because of this, please also note that useful life benchmark is not the same as useful life for FTA grant programs, which typically defines the minimum age at which equipment can be retired. Useful life benchmark will automatically populate a default value when you select the vehicle type on the A30. 
For example, the vehicle type for this fleet is selected as bus. The standard useful life benchmark for buses, as defined by FTA, is 14 years. Thus, a value of 14 will populate in this field. Agencies have the option to report a value that differs from the default. Useful life remaining will automatically populate once you report the year the fleet was manufactured. In this example, if the fleet was manufactured in 2014, it has been in service for four years as of 2018. If, if the useful life benchmark for buses is 14 years, then the fleet would have 10 useful life years remaining. Please note, useful life remaining is not an editable field. This value is determined based on the year manufactured as well as the useful life benchmark fields. Lastly, you will report the mileage information. This includes miles this year, which should reflect all mileage incurred by the fleet during the fiscal year, and then the average lifetime miles, which is the average total mileage per active vehicle in the fleet. Average lifetime miles can be calculated for the current report year in two ways. If the prior year's average lifetime miles were accurate, you can divide the miles this year by the number of active vehicles and add it to the previous year's average lifetime miles number. Or you can simply take the average of all odometer readings for all active vehicles in a fleet if the odometers have worked for the entirety of the vehicles. If you need to edit an existing fleet, you will first click on the link of the fleet's RVI ID or Revenue Vehicle Inventory ID. Once you click on the desired fleet, you will be able to update any fields you see necessary. A new feature that was added in Report Year 2017 is the ability to add an existing fleet onto your A30 form. For agencies that share fleets between modes, you will now be able to copy fleets from one A30 to another by selecting the Add Existing Fleet option. The system will populate all fleets that may be shared between modes. If a fleet is no longer in service and needs to be retired, you should not delete the fleet from the A30 form, but rather you should report active vehicles as zero and then select Yes for Is this fleet retired? If the fleet is out for repairs and will be coming back into service, you will update active vehicles to zero and then select no to is the fleet retired question at the bottom of the form. Fleets should only be deleted from the form if they were erroneously added to the report. You can delete a fleet by clicking on the red X next to the fleet entry. Next, we will cover the A35 form. The Service Vehicle Inventory, or A35 form, is where you report your agency's non-revenue vehicles that support your revenue service. Service vehicles are roadworthy, self-propelled, or major pieces of construction equipment that support revenue operations, maintains revenue vehicles, and perform transit-oriented administrative activities. Report all service vehicles for which your agency has capital responsibility. Similar to the A30 form, group service vehicles fleets by vehicles that share the same characteristics across the board. These must be identical vehicles across all specifications. Service vehicles are grouped into three vehicle types, automobiles, trucks and other rubber tire vehicles, and steel wheel vehicles. First, to add a service fleet, click Add New. You will then click Add Service Fleet at the bottom left-hand side of the screen. The first section of the form is the basic information for the fleet. Report the fleet name and agency fleet ID. These can be names and IDs that make the fleet easily identifiable for your agency. 
Similar to the facility's A15 form, you must assign a primary mode, and you can assign secondary modes as applicable. Then, you will select the vehicle type for the fleet from the drop-down menu. Next, you will enter the number of total vehicles in the fleet. The Useful Life Benchmark field will populate when you select the vehicle type. You may choose to use your own Useful Life Benchmark, and if so, you would update the figure in the ULB field. Now, you report the year the fleet was manufactured, as well as any applicable notes as needed. On the next page, report your agency's capital responsibility percentage for the fleet. Lastly, enter the estimated cost for the vehicle fleet and the year dollars of estimated cost. For the estimated cost, the agency should report the full cost to replace the fleet, including soft costs such as financing charges. This value can be the most recent value the agency has whether that is the original cost of the assets or the insured value. The year dollars of the estimated cost simply means what year is your estimate from. If you are using the original cost of the asset and it was purchased in 2012, your year dollars would be 2012. Next is the A90 form. On the Transit Asset Management Performance Measure Targets A90 form, report targets from your asset performance in the upcoming fiscal year. This form compares data from your current report year asset forms to the targets entered in the prior report year. You may also submit a narrative report that outlines your performance targets, but the narrative report will not be required until report year 2019. These are the categories that you will see in the A90 form. The sections are broken down into equipment, which represents service vehicles, rolling stock, which represent revenue vehicles, facilities, which represent your passenger stations and other administration facilities, and infrastructure, which doesn't apply to reduced reporters as it pertains to rail. In the first section of the A90, Report the target percentage of the revenue vehicles that will have met or exceeded their useful life benchmark by 2018. The list of vehicle types will populate based on your active modes. If any vehicle type does not apply to your agency, select the NA checkbox. The rows will become grayed out. In the equipment section, Report the percentage of service vehicles that will have met or exceeded their useful life benchmarks in 2018. Again, select NA for vehicle types that your agency does not operate. In the facilities section, report the target percentage of facilities that will rate below a 3 on the Transit Economics Requirements Model, or TERM scale, in 2018. Select the NA checkbox if the facility type does not apply to your agency. At the bottom of the A90, you may upload your agency's narrative report. This outlines performance targets and your agency's progress towards those targets. This may also include any changes in your transit system conditions or operating environment that may, affected, that may have affected your progress towards these targets. You may upload the narrative report in most file formats. Now, we will cover the RR20, or Reduce Reporting, form. This form will include financial, service, and safety data. There are several sections on the RR20 form, including fair revenues and directly generated funds, revenues occurred through a PT agreement, non-federal funds, federal government funds, service data, and safety data. The first section is where you will report financial data. First, you will report the total annual expenses by mode and type of service.
This should include all funds expended towards your public transit service. You will separate funds by funds expended on operations and funds expended on capital. Next, you will report fare revenues by mode and type of service. Fare revenues should include all income received directly from passengers, including cash or prepaid tickets, reduced or subsidized fares, donations made on board the vehicle, and any organization fares such as agreements arranged by colleges or universities. With the updated USOA changes for Report Year 2018, agencies will be required to report fare revenues in two categories passenger paid fares, and organization paid fares. Passenger paid fares will consist of direct type fares including full adult fares, senior citizen fares, etc. Organization paid fares will include fares earned from organizations for providing transit service, such as universities, reduced fare reimbursements, and other special contract transit fares. You will then report the total of other directly generated funds in the next section. Some examples of other directly generated funds would be advertising revenues, fundraisers, park and ride revenues, or interest on investments. You must provide a detailed description of the funds reported in this section. Beginning in report year 2018, agencies will now include donations and insurance recoveries in this field. Insurance recoveries should include any insurance payouts, dividends or rebates, and funds that may be netted out towards future bills. The next section on this form is for PT agreement revenues or revenues occurred through a PT through a purchase transportation agreement. You should only report a value in this field if your purchase transportation agreement meets NTD criteria for a full cost contract. This field is for revenues accrued, through a, by, accrued by a seller of transportation services. This will not include passenger fares generated by this service. You should only report a value in this field if you are the seller or operator of purchased transportation. If this field applies to your agency, you will indicate whether these revenues come from another entity reporting agency or a non-entity reporting agency. Next, you will report your non-federal funds. This includes donations, local funds, state funds, and other funds. If you report funds under other, you'll be required to, to provide a detailed description of these funds. The last section in the financial data section is federal funds. You will first select the applicable federal funding sources on the left side of the screen. Once you do so, the fields will populate on the right side of the page for data entry. Once you have determined the appropriate sources, then you will enter the data for each federal funding source. As a reminder, you will report funds expended on operations and funds expended on capital in separate columns. Please note, if you select an other option, such as other FTA funds or other USDOT funds or other federal funds, you will be required to provide a description of the original source program. Some examples of these other sources may be FHWA funds or Medicaid funds. Next, you will report service data. You are required to report annual vehicle revenue miles annual vehicle revenue hours, annual unlinked passenger trips, including sponsored trips for demand response and demand taxi modes, and annual vehicles operated in maximum service. Vehicle revenue miles and hours should include the miles and hours when the vehicle is in revenue service and also include layover and recovery time. Revenue miles and hours should not include deadhead, operator training, school bus or charter services, or vehicle maintenance testing. Here, you will see a table that illustrates what is revenue service, both miles and hours for demand response. 
For example, when the vehicle departs the dispatching point to pick up a passenger, this is not considered revenue miles or hours. However, on the third example of the table, when a vehicle arrives at a pickup point and waits for the passenger, this would be considered vehicle revenue hours. The next table outlines examples of revenue service for a bus mode. When the bus is traveling on its route during scheduled revenue operation, this would be considered vehicle revenue hours and revenue miles, even if passengers do not board the vehicle. On the fourth row, this provides an example of deadhead. Once the bus arrives at the end of the route and then deadhead and deadheads back to the storage lot and parks, this would not be considered revenue service. You can reference these tables for both demand response and bus in our policy manual, which is posted on the NTD website. Unleaked passenger trips should represent the total number of boardings on your agency's vehicles while providing public transit. This should be the total boardings for the entire fiscal year that you are reporting on. The last section of the RR20 form is the safety data section. You will report any reportable events that meet one of the following criteria. An event that results in a fatality, an injury, $25,000 or more in damages, a collision that results in the towing of a transit vehicle or another vehicle involved, or an evacuation for life safety reasons. Fatalities should be reported if they occur within 30 days of the event and injuries are reported when passengers are transported away from the scene for medical attention. Now we will cover common validation issues with service data. The first is reporting scheduled hours or available service hours instead of revenue hours. You should report actual vehicle revenue hours, not scheduled hours. The second common validation issue is reporting vehicle revenue miles based on an average route distance. Agencies should be tracking actual, mile, actual revenue miles and not calculating this total. The third common issue relates to deadhead. Agencies should not include deadhead in annual vehicle revenue miles or annual vehicle revenue hours. Deadhead includes the time and miles while leaving the garage to go to the first point of revenue service returning to the garage from the last point of revenue service, or any time the driver does not have the duty to carry passengers. If you have questions about what to include in your service totals, please contact your analyst for further guidance. All right, so next we're going to cover the FFA-10 Federal Funding Allocation Statistics Form. On this form, you will report the vehicle revenue miles, hours, ridership, and operating expenses broken down by each UZA you serve. You will complete one FFA-10 form for each mode. The UZAs will populate based on your agency's B-10 form. If you provide service within one UZA or one non-UZA, you will report all of your service to that area. If you operate in more than one area, you will report all the data statistics for that route to the UCA or non-UCA that is primarily served, or you may also allocate the data statistics proportionally to the UCAs and non-UCAs served. For further information on serve rules and allocating to different UCAs, please refer to the NTD serve rules in our policy manual. All right, so here you can see an example of an FFA-10 form with one UZA. There is only one column to enter all of the data. Here is an example of an FFA-10 form with two UZAs. There will be two columns to report your data, one for each UZA or urbanized area. You will see on the left side of each FFA-10 form each data point that you will report vehicle revenue hours, or VRH, unlinked passenger trips, or UPT, vehicle revenue miles, or VRM, and operating expenses, or OE.
You will first select your UZA reporting method. There are three options, actual data, actual vehicle revenue miles, or other. For actual data, this means that your agency tracks 100% of VRH, VRM, UPT, and OE between all of the UZAs that you serve. Actual vehicle revenue miles method means that your agency only tracks vehicle revenue miles operated in each urbanized area. The system will automatically allocate the remaining data points, such as VRH, UPT, and OE, based on the VRM data that you report. The last option, other, means your agency used another methodology to track data between the urbanized areas, and you must provide a description of this method. If you select actual data, you will manually enter the values for VRH, UPT, VRM, and OE into both UZA columns. If you select actual vehicle revenue miles, you may only report VRM to each UZA. The other data points will be automatically allocated. You will report the amount of VRM in each UZA column on the form. If you select other, you will allocate your data accordingly and then provide a description of your methodology. The last form in the report package is a D10 CEO certification form. This form should be completed by your agency's CEO. This, you will first need to confirm the accuracy of your NTD report. Next, you will confirm that you reported data in accordance with NTD policy and the Uniform System of Accounts, or USOA. Now you will review the criteria listed in options A through G on the page and ensure that the data meets these requirements. You will select yes or no for each mode operated. Next is the new section for the D10 form that pertains to the IAS FD or Independent Auditor Statement for Financial Data. Here you will first indicate whether or not your agency has an existing IASFD audit within the last 10 years. Please note that most reduced reporters will not have had one of these audits completed. Next you will indicate whether or not your agency has a waiver for this audit. If not, the last question will appear and you can upload your newly completed IASFD document directly into the reporting system. You will need to complete the date it was completed and then also indicate who the audit was completed by. Lastly, you will review the data collection method for unlinked passenger trips. There are several methods, the most common being 100% count of unlinked passenger trips. The other options are an alternative sampling method, the NTD sampling method, or none of the above options, which you would provide a description for. Please note that most reduced reporters do not sample for unlinked passenger trips. If you're unsure of what method to select, please consult with your analyst for guidance. Once you've determined the method that your agency uses for unlinked passenger trip data, you will then select the choice from the drop-down menu and the form is complete. Now we will cover how to submit your agency's NTD report once the forms are completed. Please note that completing the forms in your report package or completing the D10 form does not submit your report to your analyst. Once the report is finalized, you'll navigate to the report package summary page and select related actions. Please note that only the CEO or CEO delegate may submit the original submission, which is the first submission of the report. The NTD contact may submit all subsequent reports during the revision process. Once related actions is open, select submit annual report. If the report is complete and there are no outstanding issues with the data, you will be able to confirm the report package submission by clicking continue. Once the report is submitted, you will receive a notification that says action completed, completed successfully. 
You can confirm that the package was submitted if the package is listed as in review rather than in working data on the report package summary page. Lastly, we will cover the validation process and what happens with your report after you submit the original submission to your analyst. Your assigned NTD analyst will validate your completed report for any deviations from the reporting requirements, missing data, or any data irregularities. This includes whether the data fluctuated significantly from the prior report year, if any forms do not contain all of the necessary information, or if any data elements were reported to the incorrect field. <coughs> prior to submitting the report, Agencies may take advantage of their resources to reduce the time dedicated to report validation. This includes contacting your analyst prior to submission so that they may review your data in advance. You may also refer to reporter, reporter checklists included in your welcome packet, which contain common validation errors and other items to look out for before submitting your report. It is typical for a report to go through a few revision cycles before being closed out. Your analyst will almost always return the original submission for data revisions or clarification. Once the report is ready to be sent to FTA for, for approval, it will either be sent as a clean closeout, which means that there were no issues with the report, or it will be a closeout with issues, which means that there were some outstanding issues that could not be resolved prior to the report closeout. The issues are cited in your closeout letter, and your agency will be expected to resolve them by the following report year. Looking ahead to the 2018 report year, you can expect a welcome email from your analyst as your due date approaches. This email will include a packet containing helpful tips and tools, as well as the reporter checklist. Your analyst will also provide guidance in completing, submitting, and validating the report until it is closed out please do not hesitate to reach out to your analyst with any questions or concerns that you have about your report. All right, well, that concludes the presentation. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Again, here up on the screen, we have the contact information for our help desk line. We're open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern time to help with any technical assistance that you need. We will now go ahead and open it up for questions. Um, so I think we covered most of the questions in the chat pod. Um, if we didn't, please feel free to submit them now. That's exactly what I was going to say, Melissa. Um, oh, Dan was typing. Okay, I think Dan just answered Janet's uh, question. <clears throat> we'll just wait a little bit and see if any more questions come through. Um, Wilson Lee said, can you explain again the definition of the useful life benchmark for vehicles again? Sure. So the useful life benchmark for your vehicles is the expected life cycle of your capital asset within your agency's unique operating environment. So um, FTA has outlined default useful life benchmarks for each vehicle type. Um, you don't have to use these defaults. They're just provided to you if you'd like to use them. Your agency may determine your own useful life benchmarks for each vehicle type um, within your unique operating environment. And to distinguish, um, useful life benchmark is not the same as the grant useful life for a vehicle. So a lot of agencies may be familiar with um, the grant useful life of vehicles, um, which pertains to FTA's grant requirements. So those years um, and or miles, typically years or miles, that is different than the useful life benchmark that you will report for the asset inventory module. Um, the useful life benchmark is meant to capture 
the expected life cycle of that asset, you know, given any weather conditions or, you know, anything specific to your agency that may, um, you know, cause a vehicle to be used for more years, less, year, or less years. It's more customizable to your agency. Um, so I'd recommend if you have any questions. Yeah, exactly. It's self-determination. Thanks, Wilson. I hope that answered your question. But if you do have need further clarification on that, you can always just ask your analyst as well. Great. Uh, anybody else? Please type your question in the chat box. All right, um, Melissa, Dan, do you have any parting words? Yeah, obviously, um, if you have any other questions that come to you uh, after we sign off here, please feel free to reach out to your analysts. You know, we're here to help you guys out and, and make the reporting process go as smoothly as possible. So, so use us as your resources, as we're more than happy to help. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know who your assigned analyst is, um, please feel free to contact either Dan or I, or you can contact our help desk line, either by email or phone, and we can figure out who your assigned analyst is for contact. Okay. Um, thank you to everyone for participating in this webinar. A special thank you to Melissa and Dan for their informative presentation. As a reminder, um, you will be receiving an invitation to fill out an evaluation survey for this event. NPI greatly appreciates your feedback, so just take a couple minutes and uh, fill that out for us. We would appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Have a great afternoon.